Hello, my name is Alex Whitney and this is Conspiracy 101 and today we're going to be looking into the Tunguska event. Now I know what you're thinking. We're going to start on Wikipedia, of course we are! Why wouldn't we? No, you're wrong! Wrong! Today instead, we're going to go old school! <laughs> and go on Britannica uh, and the reason I'm doing this is for anybody who's uh, joining this video watching this video and just wants a brief overview of what the Tunguska event is and uh, not necessarily the myriad of conspiracies that go with it uh, and I can understand that so let's just go through the be brief basics apologies um, just straight off the bat I am going to mispronounce nearly every single Russian word in this video what is known and not known about the Tunguska event? Rumours, conjecture, and conspiracy theories. Ooh! Swirl around the explosion that happened near the Podkamyananya Tunguska River in Siberia, Russia in 1908. Here is what is known for sure. The explosion occurred about 7.13 a.m., local time on June 30th, 1908. It left no impact crater. The event flattened some 2,000 square kilometers, 500,000 acres of pine forest. Eyewitnesses report a fireball followed by trembling ground and hot winds strong enough to knock down people. Seismographs in Western Europe recorded seismic waves from the blast. <laughs> you just imagine that. Some guy in, um, I don't know, Sweden. Clarence, did you knock the seismograph again? It's doing some awfully strange readings. No, it wasn't me, Hubert. The blast was visible from some 800 kilometers, 500 miles away. Afterwards, Siberia and parts of Europe experienced abnormally bright nighttime skies for some time. The only likely remains of the shattered object that have been found are a few tiny fragments, each measuring less than a millimetre across. Here is what scientists think happened. So-called scientists. The explosion was likely caused by the collision of an asteroid or a comet with atoms and molecules of the Earth, Earth's atmosphere. Objects of suitable size for this type of explosion collide with Earth every 300 years on average. The explosion likely happened at an altitude of 5 to 10 kilometers, 15 to 30,000 feet, therefore leaving no impact crater. The energy of the explosion is estimated to have been the equivalent of the explosive power of as much as 15 megatons of TNT, a thousand times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima in Japan. The radiant energy from the explosion would have ignited trees, but the subsequent blast wave would have extinguished the flames. Thus, the forest was only charred, not burned completely. Here are the questions that remain. What type of body caused the explosion? How big was it? What was it made of? Dun dun dun! Also, for some reason, this Britannica question i guess it's not an article on the actual tunguska event just goes into other like conspiracy theories uh so malaysian air flights um open door policy in china it's a bit brief overview of china's cultural revolution it just keeps on going you know rise of machines and pro i don't know if it's like articles or something i don't i don't know i just don't know alas we are back to the Wikipedia, Tunguska event, or occasionally called the Tunguska incident. We're gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna spend too much time on the Wikipedia article because let's uh, change things up a little bit. No, that's me. There we go. So you can see things. <clears throat> also, I have just so you know, I have muted. I have mute button. It actually works this time. So when I and subsequently throw up, you hopefully won't hear it. So, so let's go event. We're not gonna to spend too much time on the Wikipedia article like we usually do because there are some amazing conspiracy theories and conspiracy theory websites in regards to this event. So let's just go over the basics. Again, we've already talked about the bullet points. It's, you know, 
Look at this pretty picture. Isn't that a pretty picture? Of lots of trees all falling down. And, and Excuse me. I get choked up every time I talk about it. The Tunguska event, occasionally called the Tunguska Incident, was a 12 megaton explosion that occurred near the Podkamenyanya Tunguska River in Yenziansk Governorate, or now Kran Krasnoyask Krai in Russia, the morning of June 30th, 1908. The explosion of the sparsely populated eastern Siberian taiga flattened an estimated 80 million trees over an area of 2,150 kilometers of forest, and eyewitness reports suggest that at least three people may have died in the event. May have died? I don't know. Taiga? <laughs> You'll only know what taiga means if you play Magic the Gathering or you're a geographer. Uh, it's just a type of frozen land, basically. A type of land? It's just a type of land. The explosion is generally attributed to a meteor airburst, the ex atmospheric explosion of a stony asteroid about 50 to 60 meters in size. The asteroid approached from the east-south side and likely with a relatively high speed of about 27 kilometers per second. It is classified as an impact event even though no impact crater has been found. The object is thought to have disintegrated at an altitude of 5 to 10 kilometers three to six miles, rather than having hit the surface of the Earth. The Nadaska event is the largest impact event on Earth in recorded history, though much larger impacts have occurred in prehistoric times. An explosion of this magnitude would be capable of destroying a large metropolitan area. It has been mentioned numerous times in popular culture, and has also inspired real-world discussion of asteroid impact avoidance. Recently, NASA fired a rocket at an asteroid to see if they could move it. Um, and I'm sure that this kind of thing, event, incident, uh, would have impacted, you know, <laughs> ay, 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 would have impacted uh, whether they wanted to try something like that out. Um, let's go briefly over description and then we'll go through it and then bam, into the conspiracies. On June 30th, 1908, Cited in Russia as 17th of June 1908, because they had the stupid old calendar, didn't they? Uh, at around 7.17 local time, Evenki natives and Russian settlers in the hills northwest of Lake Baikal. Lake Baikal! The deepest of all lakes! Uh, observed a bluish light nearly as bright as the sun, moving across the sky and leaving a thin trail. Closer to the horizon, there was a flash producing a billowing cloud followed by a pillar of fire and a cast a red light on the landscape. The pillar split into two and faded, turned into black. About ten minutes later, there was a sound similar to an artillery, artillery fire. Eyewitnesses closer to the explosion reported that the source of the sound moved from east to the north of them. The sounds were accompani accompanied... Accompanied? The sounds were accompanied... Excuse me, for I am sick. I have the immune system of a 17th century dandy. The sounds were accompanied by a shockwave. Hang on. Yes, sounds were accompanied, accompanied by a shockwave that knocked people off their feet and broke windows hundreds of kilometers away. The explosion registers at seismic stations, Clarence and Hubert, across Eurasia, and airwaves from blast were detected in Germany, Denmark, Croatia, the United Kingdom, and as far away as Batavia, Dutch East Indies, and Washington, D.C. It, uh, it is estimated in some places the resulting shockwave was equivalent to an earthquake measure in five on the Richter's magnitude scale. That is an old scale. Nobody uses that scale anymore. It's all about the MMS. Over the next few days, night skies in Asia and Europe were aglow. There are contemporaneous reports of brightly lit photographs being successfully taken at midnight without the aid of flash bulbs in Sweden and Scotland. It has been theorised that the sustained glowing effect was due to light passing through the high altitude ice particles that had formed at extremely low temperatures as a result of an explosion, a phenomenon that decades later was produced by space shuttles. 
in the United States, a Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory program at the Mount Winslow Observatory in California observed a months-long decrease in atmospheric transparency consistent with an increase in the suspended dust particles. Um... <clears throat> This is the Tunguska Marshes, around the area where it fell. This photo is from a magazine around the world, 1931. Although the original photo was taken between 27 and 30. Very interesting. Though the region of Siberia, in which the explosion occurred, was very sparsely populated in 1908. There are accounts of the event from eyewitnesses. Yeah, mm, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Ooh, that's a pretty looking graph you got there, boy. Mm. Okay, so... <clears throat> it's in Russian. Scientific investigation. Uh, move it over. There we go, cool. Since the 1908 event, there have been an estimated 1,000 scholarly papers, most in Russian, published about the Tunguska explosion. Owing to the remoteness of the site and the limited instrumentation available at the time, modern scientific interpretations of its cause and magnitude have relied chiefly on damage assessments and geological studies conducted many years after the event. That's one of the problems and one of the reasons why it comes up in these conspiracy circles so often is because it's just... there wasn't stuff to measure it and like properly record it like there is now. Something that happened recently, past few years, was the um, a similar meteor in um, Russia, and that was captured by a thousand and one dash cams. Um, so we had evidence of what it looked like and where it was, and we could go find it and all that kind of stuff. This not so much. Photograph from Kulik's 1929 expedition taken near the Hushmo River. That's 21 years later. Um, that's always going to have problems, isn't it? But they went and they, you know, measured it and they took pictures and et cetera, et cetera. But look at, look at that big boy. Mm. Conspar con comparison of the possible size of Tunguska TM Mark and Chiblinks meteorites in the eye. Chiblinks, the modern one. Yeah, so this is the one that, there it is. Look at it. It's beautiful. This is the one that came in 2013. Wow, it was a long time ago. I'm old. Um, and was caught on just... Every dash cam and camera in a very long, you know. There we go. So that shows how big this Tunguska event was. Imagine that. Imagine that. Uh, glacier impact hypothesis. In 2020, a group of Russian scientists used a range of computer models to calculate the passage of asteroids with diameters 200, 150 meters at oblique angles across the Earth's atmosphere. They used a range of assumptions about the object's composition, as if it was made of iron, rock, or ice. The model was most closely matched with the observed event was an iron asteroid up to 200 meters in diameter, traveling at 11.2 kilometers per second, which glanced off the Earth's atmosphere and returned into solar orbit. So that's an interesting one. Maybe nothing did actually crash. Maybe it just skimmed and, you know, the skimming was what caused the, yeah, the problem. Asteroid or comet? Why not both? In 1930, a British meteorologist and mathematician, F.J.W. Whipple. Now that is a name you can be proud of. Is there a picture? Ah, oh, there's no picture of Francis John Welsh Whipple. I do love a good Welsh Whipple. <laughs> Suggested that the Tunguska body was a small comet. A comet is composed of dust and volatiles, such as water, ice, and frozen gases, and could have completely vaporized by the impact with Earth's atmosphere, leaving no obvious traces. The comet hypothesis was further supported by glowing skies, or sky glows, black nights, observed across Eurasia for several evenings after the impact. Uh, in 1978, Slovak astronomer Lubor Krasek suggested that the body was a fragment of a, a, an already known comet. Uh, then they got people criticising it, saying, <laughs> yeah, it's not a comet! It's not a comet! Uh, stony objects should have produced a large crater. So that's why, you know, maybe it's an asteroid. Whoa, look at these bad boys. Conspar comparison of approximate sizes of notable impact with the Hober meteorite. A Boeing 747 and new Rootmaster... A new Rootmaster bus.
A new one, not an old one. Not an old one. Uh, wow, these guys are huge. Look at these guys. It was big, basically. It was big. Ah, so, late Checo. In June 2007, scientists from University of Bologna identified a lake in the Tusca region as a possible impact crater from the event. They do not dispute that the Tusca body exploded in mid-air, but believe a fragment survived the explosion and stuck in the ground. Lake Checo is a small bowl-shaped lake approximately eight kilometers north northwest of the hippocenter. Uh, but it's been disputed by lots of different people. But again, as, as a maybe, as a maybe, we'll put it in the maybe pile. Geophysical hypothesis. Though scientific consensus is that the Tunguska explosion was caused by the impact of a small asteroid. There are some dissenters. Oh, I do love a good dissenter. Astrophysicist Wolfgang Kunt has proposed that the Tunguska event was caused by the release and subsequent explosion of 10 million tons of natural gas from within the Earth's crust. The basic idea is that natural gas leaked out of the crust and then rose to its equal density height in the atmosphere. From there, it drifted downwards in a sort of wick, which eventually found an ignition source such as lightning. Once the gas was ignited, the fire streaked along the wick and then down to the source of a leak in the ground, whereupon there was an explosion. The similar Vernshot hypothesis has also been proposed as a possible cause of the Tunguska event. Other research has proposed a geophysical mechanism as well. What is Vernshot? Oh, it's just again, just build up of gas. Okay. But named after Vern. A similar event. <clears throat> A, small, a smaller airburst occurred over a populated area in 2013. We talked about that in the Ural district of Russia. Again, Russia being one of you know, being the biggest country. Kind of, you know, these kind of things are more likely to happen there than they are anywhere else. That's, that's, that's not a conspiracy. That's not a conspiracy. That is truth. Again, Asteroid Day, but also Tunguska event in popular culture. And one of the reasons why I want to talk about this is because I was reminded of this um, by the X-Files game. Oh, it's not even on here. <laughs> it's not worth being on here. Um, not the good game that I played through entirely on this channel. I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch it. Um, there is a game that's basically like a, an FMV game. It's kind of fun and you play through it, but you actually get to see Mordor and Scully and stuff. And it's like a its own episode. This one was a PS2 Resident Evil clone, um, but it uses this event as a as a as an introduction to the story, basically. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it, because I knew there'd be conspiracies. And there are. So let's get on with it. <clears throat> the four best conspiracy theories about the Russian meteorite. So a lot of these conspiracies. came out, or at least were um, were introduced to the mainstream because of the, the, the one that was caught on camera. Um, uh, and lots of images like this. But again, all of these conspiracies can be um, brought back again to the original one. Um, but keep that in mind. Read on for our four favorite space rock conspiracy theories in order from least likely to most likely. Least likely. Drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. The Mayan apocalypse conspiracy theory. Least likely. Doubt it. Meet, Jar Meet Jerry. Jerry C. Sat Daniels. I'll try again. Meet Gary C. Daniels, the author of several elaborately argued books about the Mayan prophecies, using the logic of someone with. Shall I change? <clears throat> Using the logic of someone with a vested interest in selling Mayan apocalypse theories, he insists that the fact that the supposed date of a Mayan apocalypse has come and gone isn't a strike against his theory. Instead, a natural disaster since any natural disaster since December 21st, 2012, is just more proof. The time period after December. Uh, okay. The it was a weapon test conspiracy theory. Now, this is more of an interesting one, especially for the 1908 one. 
The story, uh, by the state-owned Russian Today, initially attributed the explosion to a meteorite to a Russian missile. But that was just an explanation for the meteorite breakup. Other th theories claim that meteorite itself was evidence of a new weapon. Not to be outdone, Russian ultra-naturalist Vladimir Zivazonsky claimed that the meteorite was actually the Americans testing new weapons. This theory gained traction, noted conspiracy theory den Rents.com, where the meteorite crash is believed to have been a test of God Rods, the ultimate bunker busters, which strike with Luciferian power, despite their name, which came, no doubt, from the apocalyptic court of the evangelical graduates of the Air Force Academy. That was a tongue twister. If apocalyptic military cabals with demon-powered weaponry aren't weird enough, this thread at Godzilla production dived into missile defense Illuminati Ronald Reagan US nuclear testing above Russia, all apparently revealed by last week's meteorite. The alien invasion conspiracy theory, 1908. Within an hour of a meteorite impact, English language Russian news aggregate Russia Slam, or is it Russia's Lamb? had already reported on a poll resulted suggesting that a tiny majority of Russians believe the meteorite was part of an interstellar attack. Of course, the Russians weren't the only ones to see aliens in Meteor's massive vapor trail. But we're... <laughs> that we are all in a conceptual video game conspiracy theory. <clears throat> uh... Here we go. This is hardly the first time an astronomical phenomenon has sparked a plethora of alternative explanations. The 1908 Tunguska event, event, which most scientists believe was a meteorite that exploded mid-air, has been called everything from an alien crash landing, link doesn't work, to a Nikola Tesla experiment gone wrong. That's my kind of conspiracy. Let's go, Nikola Tesla. Uh -huh. So, the Tesla Memorial Society of New York. Now, this is a website. This is a, this is a mm, chef's kiss of a website. The, we've got a lot of good websites. Welcome to Tesla Memorial Society of New York website. Mysterious, uh, this link, that link didn't work, by the way. I had to find this link. Mysterious Tunguska explosion of 1908 in Siberia may be linked to Tesla's experiments of wireless transmission. Look at that bad boy. Mm-hmm. Is light in a bulbous mind. Nikola Tesla holding a gas filled phosphor coated light bulb, which was illuminated without wires by an electromagnetic field from a Tesla coil. Many theories have been proposed for the cause of the explosion. One theory is that Tesla's experiments with wireless transmission may have inadvertently caused the explosion. There we go, that's a nice picture. That's the same one that was. Is that the same one that was like 20 years later? And it still looks like that? Did you know that in 1908 in Siberia, one of the most catastrophic, mind-blowing, and mysterious cosmic impact catastrophes ever in the history of civilization occurred? And yet it wasn't widely known outside Russia, save for a few astronomy and research scientists enclaves, until around the 1970s. Even interested research parties didn't learn about or even set foot on the scene of the disaster until 1921. It didn't make the front pages news, the papers, when it happened, because of the extreme remoteness of the region in Siberia. Also at play was the secretive, unsettled nature of Russia at the time, which of course only heightened the many conspiracy theories surrounding it today. The so-called Tunguska event refers to a major explosion that occurred on 30th June 1908. Yep, with, uh, we know all this. We're not, we, we're, we are up to date with this. We know this. Nikola Tesla in his Corola, Cor Colorado, Colorado, Colorado laboratory with magnifying transmitter in action. 20 million volts of electricity. Tesla's possible connection to the Tunguska explosion, Siberia, 1908. One theory is that Tesla's experiments with wireless transmissions may have inadvertently caused the explosion. This is it. This is the evidence. This is this is the uh, this is the smoking gun. Are you ready, people? Nikola Tesla, 
was testing out some sort of weird phantasmagorical communication device or super scary energy weapon or death ray and made a big oops. Tesla was known to be working on a sort of wireless torpedo called a Talautomaton. Interesting. Which was a remote controlled boat he offered to the US Navy for the purpose of carrying explosives to naval targets. An airborne. Airboyne, an airborne version of the Telautomotan device was under development as well. Some also believe that if there was a Tesla connection and it was a weapons test, that he may have been pressured into it and then kept quiet. This is, of course, just heaping extra drama onto a theory already wrought with ridiculousness, even though the 19. Hang on! Ridiculousness? I thought you were meant to be. Tesla stands, man. Even though the 1908 time frame does match up for Tesla working on such devices, for him to be testing out such inventions in such an ap apocalyptic manner is quite a stretch. Not to mention he was nowhere near the area at the time. Suspicious? I think so. Even funnier, the theory that Tesla inadvertently caused the massive explosion when he was trying to get the attention of an explorer friend in the area, Tesla was always fascinated with the concept of wireless propagation, and he was known to work on projected wave energy, processes that could create microscopic invisible particles of concentrated energy that could be beamed great distances, often resulting in electrical fireballs, spherical plasmoids, or ball lightning. Ball lightning is a really interesting phenomena. Um, that we may get into at some point. Our pick of the week is lightning related, so stay tuned for that one. Why not use it to get someone's attention who's not near a telegram service? Of course, this fails, this falls into the secret weapons test category as well. The theory that he was using it to try and get the attention of a friend halfway around the world is hilarious, but absurd. K A B O O O M. Albert, this is Nicola. Please call me. Um, it says a uh, link to a New York Times articles where Nikola speaks of such devices. Very interesting. The pictures of like Nikola Tesla's stuff is just awesome. Look at that. Flame like discharges of an electrical oscillator giving 12 million volts, which measures 65 feet across. Colorado Springs Laboratory. Scary. Tesla said that his transmitter could produce 100 million volts of pressure and currents up to 1,000 amperes with experimental power levels of billions or tens of billions of watts. With that amount of power released in an, in an incomparable small interval of time, incomparably, incomparably small amount, the energy would be equal to the explosion of millions of tons of TNT. That is a multi-megaton explosion, just like 1908. Such transmitter would be capable of projecting the force of a nuclear warhead by radio. Any location in the world could be vaporized at the speed of light. Now, this is science fiction territory. I love it. Tesla Millennium. Tower, Shorkham, no iron, electric sparks. But tower transfer electric route wise. Let's try the entire earth. It could be first, but yeah. No, yeah. So this is getting into like the, the history of Tesla now, not necessarily 1908. Although it's very interesting. Not necessarily conspiracy related so you get the idea it could have been a really early version of text messaging by nikola tesla could have been right um <clears throat> got two more two more two more web pages to look at um let's quickly go through this one this one's just a really nice slideshow are the various um, images old and new if it works there we go cool so this is the um does it actually say what they are It'd be nice if they did no not going to show what they are i don't know if that's the crater hole the weird lake that they think might be or whether it's just the area there you go some what are you no no go away they're all like, yeah, not very. This isn't as good as I thought it was going to be. It doesn't tell you. Why does it not tell you? This is 
this is bad. Scientific America, come on. So there's some trees, it's a crater, another crater, there's a hole, this is the sky, there's a map. There you go, so you can see where it happened. Right in the middle of Russia, in Siberia. There's some more trees, there's some more trees, more trees, there's the hole again. That was not as good as I thought it was going to be. Apologies. This, however, let me just, let me just switch this over. This is one of the best things I have ever seen. And um, it, it might take us a while to find out the Tunguska event on this web page. But boy, do I love going down these rabbit holes of web pages and um, old internet archives. Are you ready for this? Reformation.org. Welcome. Let me just uh, change it so you can read the top. Welcome to the Reformation Online, the most timely and truthful site on the internet. Secured by the Holy Trinity, Father, Word, and Holy Spirit. Enter page two to access hundreds of more timely and truthful articles. The Alpha and Omega versus the Pontifex Maximus. <clears throat> sounds, like, sounds like a wrestling match, doesn't it? Um, as you can probably tell, rel relatively, relatively uh, religious, but also amazing. The Roman Catholic Holy Trinity consists of Jesus, Mary, and Mohammed. Alien militia of Jesus. I could, I could be on this, on this page all day, and maybe as a uh, season ender we might. But it's just <laughs> the royal murders in Babylon on the Thames were revealed at last. George Washington was the great grandson of King Charles II. Um, <laughs> NATO, North Atlantic Terrorist Organization. HQ is located in British Belgium. <laughs> President James Madison, unmasked at last. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, look, look at it. It's so much. And I think there's like even more pages. Uh, and then it goes in, I guess this is Reformation stuff. So like uh, Catholic into Protestant. I'm guessing this is from a Protestant angle because it seems to think a Catholics worship Muhammad. Um, Victoria's Secret, Führer Adolf Hitler was her grandson. <laughs> Top secret, fifth papal Marian dogma. Meet the real parents of Hillary Clinton. Right, um, what? <laughs> Ton. How do I spell it? Tongue, tongue. Oh, is there no tongue? Is there no Tunguska? <laughs> I went on this website for no reason. Mystery Babylon demolished the Twin Towers on 9-11. Is there really no... Um, event? No. Maybe it's in page two? Copyright 2020. Are you keeping it going? Which is great. Um, where was page two? Page two. There we go. Ha! Uh, oops, spelling it wrong. No! How is this? Ah! Oh, the greatest website of all doesn't have it. Um, a lot of these are religious based which is fair enough it's that, it's that website you know do what you want with it but I could have sworn basically um, it was a corrupted link but it was to this website and I thought oh you know when I'm live I'll just look for it I should have looked for it first um, but I can't Think of any other way. I... The top secret gay global nun, Catherine LeBeur. Yeah, a lot of these are. Let's try. Oops, kick the mic. Let's try asteroid. No. Let's try comet. No. Let's try Russia. 
<gasps> From Russia with incest. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Russian rogue sub sank near Pearl Harbor. The real reason why the capital was moved from Philadelphia. This is a this is a future. This is a future endeavor, isn't it? So we've learned a little bit about the Tunguska ex uh, experiment uh, event. It seems that most people agree it was some kind of asteroid or comet or some kind of um, something from extraterrestrial, uh, uh, which broke up or was very small over time it hit the land, messed a lot of things up. Probably didn't really kill anybody. Might have killed three people. Could have been awful if it had landed on somewhere more populated. The conspiracy, the main ones, are it was a weapon and they tested it and they're not saying they did it. Or it was aliens, which just seem to be... That doesn't seem to be a big one. People don't seem to think it's aliens, which is very interesting. Or the Tesla connection, which seems to be more fruitful uh, in its endeavours. Very interesting. Worth a little bit of your own research, or at least just to go look at the pictures. Um... The Wikipedia article is goes into a lot more depth about the actual event from a scientific point of view. But that, that's not what we do here. That's not what we do here, is it? Don't look at no science. So, let's um, pause you. Let's see if this crashes, and hopefully it won't. Ah, I have been I have been attacked. There we go. There we are. Picture of the week, picture of the week. This is an interesting one, again, related to, uh, to lightning and electricity. Um, and um, uh, <laughs> one that might be described as being quite sober. Uh, let's change it to you. Ah, no, no, pick of the week, bad pick of the week. There we go. So this image gets used a lot in um, various websites, mainly Reddit. It comes up every couple of months in Reddit. And it shows two people just before a lightning strike and the static electricity that causes your hair uh, that's, that's built up. Basically, as lightning strikes, if you go look at some really, really cool slow-mo footage of lightning, it sends out feeders um, to try and find the quickest way to the ground. And when it's doing that, the air... Um, around where lightning will eventually strike becomes built, you know, has a lot of electricity, a lot of positive charge in it. And it causes static, like, you know, when you rub a balloon and it makes your hair go up. These two people were unfortunately caught in a lightning storm. Now, the majority of times this is listed will have a source that says the person on the left died. The little kid died. Um, that's not true. So this is an NBC News article, whatever you think um, of NBC. It's relatively good journalism in that they have their sources and they actually talk to the people in the photo. So Michael McQuick, McQuilkin was right, was 18 when he and his brother, Sean, 12, climbed California's Mora Rock in 1975. So that's when this was. The photo was used for years to warn about the dangers of pending lightning strikes. So this was actually, you know, it was, it was a used photo to show the dangers of when you're climbing, uh, or um, what's the word? Mountaineering? When you go for a walk. The photo has been reprinted, posted and passed around for decades. Two grinning brothers, hair standing on end, unaware that they are minutes away from being struck by lightning or climbing ro Moro Rock in California's Sequoia? Sequoia National Park. We were from San Diego and really stupid, says Michael McQuilkin who was the long-haired 18-year-old when the snapshot was taken on August 20th, 1975. His brother, Sean, was 12. We thought it was something funny. But now, nearly 38 years later, McQuilkin says he recalls that deadly afternoon in Sierra Nevada mountains vividly, a flash of white light as bright as arc welding, a deafening explosion, the feeling of becoming weightless and being lifted off the ground. Most of all, McQuilkin says he remembers the sheer power of the bolt from above. I never was cautious before that, says McQuilkin, now 56. Now if I'm out to climb a peak, I'm the first person to bail if the clouds gather. The shocking experience attracted new interest this month when John Jensenius, 
the Lightning Safety Specialist for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, discovered McCorkin's blog post about the incident and shared it with a wide audience. Jen Sensius, who keeps track of the nation's lightning deaths for NOAA, says he's been asked frequently about the photo, which was once used in brochures to help warn campers about the potential for danger. Contrary to the rumours and some published reports, both brothers survived the strike, although another hiker was killed. There were 19 deaths reported in August 1975, in a year that saw a final toll of 91, Jensensius says. Back then, however, lightning deaths weren't well reported or tracked, he says, and the moral rock death wasn't included. Still, the photo serves as a gripping reminder of Jensensius' ongoing mission to help keep safe from people safe from lightning, which kills an average 53 people a year over the past 30 years. I'm guessing that's just in America. Fewer deaths have been reported in recent years. There were only 28 in 2012, largely because of better awareness and prevention efforts. So far this summer, when this was done, 2013, there have been 14 killed by lightning. That's still a ridiculous amount, isn't it, when you think about it? If people would plan ahead, keep an eye on the sky and get to safe places sooner, there would be many fewer deaths and injuries. So, McCulkin still lives in San Diego. He's a software engineer and drummer. And people, it says people still email him about once a week asking about the hair raising photo, which has seemed to develop a life of its own. It was taken by his 15 year old sister Mary using an old Kodak Instamatic camera. The Cookin says he and his siblings were hiking uh, the granite dome. When they reached the top to enjoy the view, someone noticed that their hair was standing on end. At the time, we thought this was humorous, McCorkin recalled. I took a photo of Mary, and Mary took a photo of Sean and me. I raised my right hand into the air, and the ring I had on began to buzz so loudly everyone could hear it. Not once did they consider that a lightning strike was imminent, he said. Suddenly, the temperature dropped dramatically, and it began to hail. The teens decided to return back to their mountain, but partway down, the bolt struck. I found myself on the ground of the others. McCorkin recalled. Sean was collapsed and huddled on his knees. Smoke was pouring from his back. It turned out Sean was one of the least three people, uh, one of at least three people hit directly that day by the triple pronged bolt, including one man who died and another who sued the US government for not warning about lightning danger, Jensenius said, noted. The lawsuit was dismissed. Sean was knocked unconscious and suffered third degree burns to his back and elbows. Although the kids didn't know it then, the hair standing on the end and the tingling sign, skin may be signs that lightning strike may be imminent. If that happens, the best advice is to seek shelter immediately. If that's not possible, squat low to the ground on your balls of your feet, making yourself the smallest target possible and minimise contact with the ground. Then, as soon as possible, get out of the area. After the strike, McCorkin and his family stayed in contact with local rangers and sent them slides of the now famous photos. Years later, his sister surprised them with a calendar that included a pirated copy of the picture. That whole experience just feels like it happened yesterday, says McCorkin, who lost his brother Sean to suicide in 1989. That's probably where the, um, the information gets skewed. He still spends lots of time outdoors, but McCorkin takes no chances with lightning. Interesting. Uh, this is the other picture of his sister on the same day. So yeah, if you're outside and you think, you know, clouds and your hair goes and starts doing that, don't risk it, mate. Don't risk it. Right, that has been a very interesting episode of Conspiracy 101. Please check out my other videos. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next Saturday. Bye.